Hi there, my name is Brooke Burton. I am an artist living and working in Boise, Idaho, and I'm coming at you with a collaboration with the Boise Art Museum to give you a little sneak peek of the exhibition that they are hosting called Everyday Objects, The Enduring Appeal of the Still Life. So the next artwork that I would like to look at is the Durer Can by Beth Van Hosen, and this was made in 1980. It's a print, aqua tint, and one thing that I love about it is that She's breaking a lot of rules of still life. Number one, she has the object on a surface. She's got this vessel, right? But it's not a glass vessel. It's some sort of tin vessel with flowers in it, which floral arrangements are very popular in still life. So you can see that it's on a surface because of the beautiful reflection. And then there's no edge. There's no surface edge anywhere. There's no drapery, just this kind of shiny blue surface that just continues on to an infinity and gets deeper and deeper into the color. What I really love about it is she's also putting sort of a portrait in of Albert Dürer. Because he's got flowers coming out of his head, it's a little bit quirky and funny and it reminds me of surrealism a little bit. And then the other thing is that if you look up Albert Dürer, he did make a couple self-portraits. He was also a painter. And the one that Beth has used here, he's sort of in his later stages of life, big beard, sort of balding on top, and he's got a little side eye to the viewer, which I love. And the can reminds me of like a cigar can. I don't know what kind of can this is. But if you look at Albert's self-portraits, wow, big difference. He has painted himself really handsome and he's got like this shirt that cuts down and shows a little bit of chest hair really cascading locks of hair I think that's how he probably would prefer to be remembered I mean I get it I get it Albert so those are the things I love about Beth's work here all right moving on oh yeah <laughs> oh gosh Albert's self-portraits, still the side eye, but just really like, I don't know if he got a perm or what. And then what, he's not the chest hair. I mean, but he's got, you know, really nicely defined sort of pecs happening. And then his drapery. Wow. That's some beautiful drapery. Very formal portrait. Very formal. Handsome dude. Definitely. By the way, here's a little interesting thing about the virtual tour if you place yourself just entering the gallery on the south wing there is some crazy lights sort of refracting here creating a rainbow in the gallery it's almost like a work of light art you know the light artists working in los angeles in the 70s accidental artwork online Okay, so in the virtual tour, I am over here at Manuel J. Tolgen's work, or Tolgen. He was working in the Great Depression, and he's definitely got a very traditional still life setup. A nice horizontal surface. On one of his paintings, you can see he's got lots of fabric and drapery, too, in fact. And on the right-hand side, there's just a nice wooden surface, and you've got Surprise, fruit, fruit and nuts, which in the Great Depression, if you remember from reading Grapes of Wrath, people in the Dust Bowl traveled west to try to get work and food. And once they got to California, they gorged themselves, not on pears or apples, but there was a lot of peaches and it was really sad because if you eat too many peaches, you get a stomach ache. So fruit and nuts and another coffee cup. Here's what's really interesting about these is um, Manuel is not using light as a strong influence on his composition. He barely has any shadows. They are very subtle. He's not using chiaroscuro and his, his colors and his forming of the spherical shapes of the fruit is very flattened out, very flattened out in, you know, to sort of maybe go against the tradition of the Dutch painters. Here's a fun fact about Manuel, is that he went to school with none other than Jackson Pollock, 
also known as one of the greatest painters of all time in abstract expressionism. He's the guy who had the bucket of paint, the big brush, and like flinging paint everywhere and like blew everybody's mind. How much would it suck to have been his classmate and being an artist? I am just sad, sad for Manuel. Here's what's really cool about the painting with the drapery is you can zoom in on the virtual tour and look right at the wall labels. The title is Fall Still Life with Quince and Persimmons, Nuts, Green Curtain. See how he's pointing that out? He wants to make sure that we've noticed that he's not including not just one drapery on the surface, but he's considering the background of the still life. I'm really big into that. I've started doing that in my own work, which is incorporating more than one plane because a lot of still lifes are about this plane right here where you can see I've set up a still life for you. But we, my friend Chance and I, have worked really hard on this background, which you're not supposed to do in still life. It's supposed to be all right here. So that's what I like about Manuel's still life is that he's considering the background of his image.